I've had the first I've had it, I practiced. Oh, yeah. Is <laughs> yeah. that someone for the yeah. second? Uh, Joan? Yeah. Okay, Joan. Yeah, you want me to do that as Joan? Like, aren't you doing the first? Yeah, yeah you can do the first. I never did the first. Okay. Yeah. Janine, yes. I'm gonna have I'm gonna ask um, Richard to do the second reading only because you read for him last week, so he, I'm gonna have him read the second reading. Okay. Bye. Okay, Richard. So how are you? Okay, thank you. You're good. Good. Yeah. Good to see you. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Look beautiful. Yeah. They're very nice. They're nice. I really like the uh, morning glory. My morning glories are really beautiful too. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing, Jeanette? I'm doing good. Good. I'm doing good. Good. It's a beautiful. Right? Yes, it is. It is. Nice. Nice. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it a beautiful day? Yeah. It is just a glorious day. It's really wonderful to be back here. Um, I had a very nice time away, and I know you were in good hands with Pastor Allie, but it's really nice to be back, too. If you are able, please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. In the high vault of heaven, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord. O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat, winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow, frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark, storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of the present moment, who stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart. Give us hope for our future, peace with whatever lies ahead, and courage to endure what cannot be avoided. Through Jesus Christ, the wisdom of creation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. Where then does wisdom come from, and where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and Death say, we have, a, we have heard a rumor of it with our ears. God understands the way to it, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the wind its weight and apportioned out the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the thunderbolt, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the portion of Psalm 107 appointed for today responsively by whole verse. Please speak loudly so people at home can hear. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. The Lord has redeemed, proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of the peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. The 
The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. Words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept through on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another who is this that he commands even the wind and the water and they obey him this is the gospel of the lord praise to you lord christ please be seated You may, if you have traveled in certain parts of Europe or even Canada, you may have been in an old church and seen one or more model sailing ships suspended from the sanctuary ceiling. And you probably wondered, why are those there? Though fairly rare in the United States, they are common in coastal cities of Europe and in maritime Canada, wherever people have made their living at sea. They're called votive ships. Votive has the same root as the word vow. Traditionally, sailors and ship owners dedicated the ship models to the church to fulfill a vow they had made that if the Lord would rescue them from shipwreck or storm, they would dedicate a model of their ship to God as an outward and visible sign of thanksgiving for safe passage through a perilous journey. And the votive ships that you see represent the prayers of family and friends whose loved ones ply the waves for their living. Seeing the votive ship reminds the congregation of the lives lost and the lives rescued. 
and in a seafaring community, such perils touch everyone. It was also an expression of faith, faith in the face of danger. Now, as you know, I've just returned from vacation on the coast of Maine. But the last two days, it was blowing a gale out of the north-northwest, smack at our house, whipping up white caps in what is usually a very, very calm body of water at the head of the Penobscot Bay. I watched the sailing ships, very few of them were out those days, um, coastal schooners with two masts, the two masted gaff rig schooners that you see, they take tourists out on two and three day trips. They were struggling to get into port because they had to sail right into the north wind. But the sky all this time was a spectacular blue, absolutely no clouds. It was a beautiful, beautiful sight, but also kind of scary. Now, Mainers, for the most part, know the water. Israel, on the other hand, did not. Israel marveled at the wisdom and the works of the Lord, storm clouds and thunderbolts and rain and wind, if you've just heard in our readings, and the depths of the sea and its creatures. But unlike its coastal neighbors, the Phoenicians, who were masters of the Eastern Mediterranean, Israel was not a seafaring nation. They were herders, they were shepherds. The sea for them was dark and full of hidden dangers. And we think of Jonah, who tried to escape God's command that he go preach repentance to the Assyrians, Israel's sworn enemies. Jonah boarded a ship bound for the farthest point of the Mediterranean, clear across the sea, but the Lord intervened by a storm so foul that the sailors compelled Jonah to confess that he was on the run from his God. Jonah asked to be thrown overboard, and the sea was instantly calm, and as every Sunday school child knows, the next thing that happened is that Jonah was rescued by a whale. He was swallowed by a whale and held beneath the ocean and tossed up on the seashore three days later. You also heard Israel's trepidation about seafaring in the portion of Psalm 107 we read today. The Lord speaks and a wind arises. The sailors in their ship are tossed heavenward and then dropped into the depths. Their hearts melt with fear. They stagger about on deck and they are at their wits end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. In the season of Creation Lectionary, which we have been following this month, it is Storm Sunday. We are reminded that the power of our Creator is evident in wind and weather. And though there are thunderstorms in the mountains and blinding dust storms in the desert, nowhere was a storm so terrifying as at sea. Not simply because most people cannot swim to save their lives, and you know, it's true in Maine that most of the fishermen don't swim. But because there is a great bottomless void under you, ready to swallow you up. Now the lake that Jesus and his disciples sailed was, of course, the Sea of Galilee, not the Mediterranean. It's not quite eight miles across and 12 miles long, and at its deepest point, about 150 feet. In other words, it's not much of a sea at all. But indeed, there are occasional storms on the Sea of Galilee. Cool air from the surrounding hills descends into the warm air above the lake. And the lake, you know, is in a rift valley. It's below sea level. And the mixing of the cold and warm causes squalls that churn up the water, throwing waves large enough to swamp a small craft. And if you don't believe me, you can look at it on um, YouTube. Just Google storm on the Sea of Galilee. We know that among the disciples, there were more than a few experienced fishermen. These guys knew how to sail. And I doubt that a bit of choppy water would have troubled them very much. So this squall must have been a whopper. They knew they were in danger. 
a danger all too familiar to the sailors and fishermen, but the sort of danger that would be the stuff of tall tales and tragic histories, how so-and-so survived by the skin of their teeth, and how your uncle or your brother had been lost at sea. Familiar danger and an unavoidable occupational hazard. Yet this storm overwhelmed their skills as sailors. So you have to imagine this. To save themselves, they have already reefed their sails. That is, they've shortened sail. They are furiously bailing water. They have dropped a sea anchor, perhaps, and stripped the deck of unnecessary gear. And still they fear for their lives. So shouting over the noise of the wind, they shake Jesus awake. He's been asleep, asleep in the stern of the boat. How does that happen? And they shout, we are dying. Then Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and the waves. And all at once the wind drops to nothing and the sea becomes calm, just like that. And the little fishing boat must have been bobbing up and down with the momentum of the storm just past. But now the disciples, I think, are truly afraid. Because what is more unsettling, the possibility of drowning in the lake, as happens sometimes to those who get their living on the water, or seeing their master bring the forces of nature under control with just a word. Remember, they have seen him cast out demons and heal the sick many times. Marvelous acts and clearly signs of his power and authority as a prophet and a healer and a man of God. But who is this who commands wind and water? Only the creator of heaven and earth has such power. They learn something. Then Jesus gently chides his disciples. Where is your faith? It's as if the thing most endangered by the storm at sea was not the disciples' lives, but their faith. As if the faith they held when they set sail had been washed overboard and lost at sea. What the disciples were in danger of losing at sea was their trust. Trust and confidence and hope that no matter what befell them, they were all ready, safe, and they didn't really know that yet. You know, all summer long we have been talking about creation care. It was our theme during our Grilling Gospels, and it's been the theme for this month. And we think about the way the world is made Wind and water behave in accordance with the way they were created. That is, atmospheric pressure, water and air temperature, geography and other physical features of a place interact and they create the weather. Human activity has very definitely altered temperature and humidity, yet water and wind and physical attributes of the natural world continue to interact and the result has been more intense hurricanes, monsoons, cyclones, tornadoes, with all the associated harm to property, to livelihoods, and loss of life, especially among those who depend on the land for their subsistence, farmers, small merchants, and poor people living in, even in New Jersey, in inadequate housing. Just this weekend, a super typhoon has hit southern Japan with winds of up to 125 miles an hour and gusts up to 170 miles an hour and very heavy rain. About a million people have been ordered to evacuate and local officials are warning of a disaster that has not been experienced in decades. Meanwhile, the west coast of Alaska is being pummeled by hurricane force winds and rain with 50-foot seas and unprecedented coastal flooding. The consensus among climate scientists is that such storms 
with the damage and loss of life that ensues will be increasingly common as the oceans warm. And it baffles me sometimes, and it makes me despair even, how any one of us or any small community can alter the course of climate change. How could we possibly do that? It's hard to fathom. And as I have said before, there are small things we can do. We can make ourselves aware. We can commit to taking the modest steps we are able to conserve energy, to be thoughtful about consuming. And we can be prepared to help those who are most in peril. And always, always, we can learn to treasure God's creation and care for the earth because to do so with intention is a sign of our care for one another and love for God and God's creations. But that said, certainly not every storm we experience is a physical weather event. You know the gospel was not written as a commentary on perils at sea, on climate, or on weather. The gospel speaks to the climate of our souls, to the climate in our communities, where turmoil and change can suddenly overwhelm us. I began several minutes ago by mentioning votive ships, the model ships dedicated as visible prayers of thanks and expressions of faith. St. Paul's Episcopal Church in the Carroll Garden section of Brooklyn has kept alive the centuries-old tradition of votive ships. In 2021, St. Paul's, like many congregations, wanted to mark coming through the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Its rector, William Ogburn, was inspired by the offering of votive ships in the past and asked that a new ship model be built for the church. He said the COVID-19 pandemic has given us new reasons to ask for God's merciful protection and to honor the memory of the four and a half million people. And actually it's a larger number than what Father Ogburn described. I think it's closer to six million. The people who have died from this sickness there's also ample opportunity for us to give our thanks to God for coming through this great ordeal safely in our own day. So this church happens to have a resident carpenter. And the resident carpenter built a replica of Sir Ernest Shackleton's ship, Endurance. And you might know the story of the Endurance. The Endurance became trapped in a pack of, of sea ice and it eventually sank during Shackleton's trans-Antarctic expedition in 1915. But the entire crew survived and was saved. We all know that storms strike in every era and there has never been an age without troubles. We might feel that our times are particularly hard. Not every era will endure a global pandemic. Not every age has experienced the effects of accelerating climate change. Such storms have us wondering if the Lord is asleep. And in the worst of it, haven't you prayed, Jesus, we are perishing. We are lost. Help us, Jesus. And Jesus' question to his disciples still remains, where is your faith? Where is our trust and where is our hope? Where is our faith that in troubled times the Lord sees us, knows our fears, and has already rescued us? To live a life that is more than mere existence, more than just survival, but an abundant life, Life marked by love for one another with the conviction that we have a shared responsibility and a shared destiny with other creatures. Life of reverence for the wisdom of God expressed even in wind and water and thunderbolts and storms at sea, a life that is marked 
by fearlessness and hope. So let us pray. God, our Creator, as we face the storms of this world in this time, we celebrate the wonders of the wind and the water that hold us in awe. Help us to see you present, not only in the forces of nature, but also among those who suffer from natural disasters. Teach us to recognize that your wisdom is embedded in all natural forces. We ask for your saving grace. In the name of Christ, who is the wisdom of God, renewing all things in creation. Amen. If you are able, please stand. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace and in faith, let us offer our prayers, saying, Christ, have mercy. For the peace and tranquility in the world, and for the salvation of all, let us pray. Christ, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, William, our bishop, Megan and Ali, our priests, and Vasu, our deacon, and for all the people of God, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For Joseph, our president, Philip, our governor, for lawmakers and courts, and for all in authority, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For this town, for every city and community, and for those who live, work, and attend school in them, let us pray, Christ have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For the sick and the suffering, and for those who have asked our prayers, especially Joyce, Patsy, Carol, Janine, Patricia, Barbara, Barbara, Bruce, Carol, Barbara, Herb, Meltre, 
Valerie, Robert, Tom, Herbert, Sean, Taylor, Ralph, Ivan, Pat, Bobby, and Jacob. We pray also for Pastor Ali and the staff and patients of Trenton Psychiatric Hospital, for John and staff and patients of Unkind Forensic Center, and those we now name. Let us pray, Christ, Christ have mercy. For all whose lives are linked closely and linked with ours, especially those celebrating birthdays, including Logan, Zachary, Christy, and Greg. An anniversary, including Steve and Tina. Let us pray. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all who departed, including Mary Lou Wayne, Charles Wayne, and James Granger. Let us pray. Christ, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil you have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please take a moment to greet each other. So good morning again, and uh, I draw your attention to the bulletin and all the announcements that are there. Um, lots happening, and next Sunday is our kickoff Sunday, rally Sunday, call it what you will, but I hope that you will come, and I'm looking forward to seeing a few faces I haven't seen in a while. We will have a new church musician. She is a student at TCNJ. Uh, she's going to accompany us, so we'll be singing hymns again. And I want you to sing lustily so that everyone will be able to hear you at home. And not just hear me, please. <laughs> but anyway, her name is Rachel Tang, and uh, she is interested in learning about church musicianship. So we are, in a sense, training her. I hope you will greet her warmly. On Saturday, the day before, we will have a table at uh, Community Fest, which is on the campus of TCNJ. I will be there. Vasu's going to come by. I do hope some of you will come and maybe just sit with me for a little while because I'll be there from about 9 to 4 o'clock. And I like company. 
Um, and it's just an opportunity to be in the community, um, telling people who we are, uh, sharing prayer, and um, you know, being part of this location. I also want to bring to your attention that Father Mike Panzarella, um, who has been at Grace St. Paul's now for quite a while, will be um, celebrating new ministry. Actually, the bishop will celebrate the new ministry, but it is for Mike, who is now priest in charge at Grace St. Paul's. And we are invited. And it would be lovely if you could be there. It's October 8th. Yeah, I believe it's at 10 in the morning. And, um, you know, it, it would be wonderful if we could make a little showing. And last of all, um, with respect to Grace St. Paul's, as you know, we are still exploring the affiliation. We need to put together an affiliation task force, and we need to provide at least four members from St. Luke's. I was told by Father Mike on Friday when he called to chat that he has five people already. Dear St. Luke's, raise your hand. This is a conversation about affiliation, and if it goes well, a memorandum of understanding will be prepared. I am hoping that we will have representatives of different ages, different uh, backgrounds, different histories with the church to inform the conversation as we explore further the affiliation with Green St. Paul's. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name bring offerings and come into his courts. If you are able, please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Christ give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace but we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life.
On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Luke, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the blessing of God our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.